All right, here we go. Another travel mini doc slash uh, expose, whatever you want to call these things. I love them. So before we begin, let me just kind of set the tone. I'm actually glad I made this video because it does have some information that can be prefaced in the upcoming UAE video. Second, I am not by any means like a luxury person. Not that I'm like trying to go on a tirade against materialism, but it's just, I, I don't know. My brain doesn't function that way. I don't get it. I was raised by Koreans and like many other Asian countries, we are taught the value of fiscal prudencies. We try to get the most or best quality with the the least amount of money. Why would I spend 20 euros on a small cube of foie gras when I can totally just get that cat food stuff from the Czech Republic? I love pastika. Désolé France, mais à mon avis c'est vrai. Je, je pense qu'il a un goût mieux que foie gras. In any case, one day I got an email that kind of went like this. Hey Paul, so we love your channel and we would love to have you participate in VidCon Abu Dhabi as a panelist as well as a moderator. We're actually going to fly you out business class and then the Abu Dhabi Tourism Board would love to sponsor you and put you up in a five-star hotel and there's going to be a lot of high-end activities involved as well. I totally thought this was fake, so I responded like this. VidCon Abu Dhabi? They've never done it in Abu Dhabi. So you've never heard of us because this is the first time that VidCon is going to Abu Dhabi, so you're going to be part of a brand new event. Here is our show website and a list of other creators that we are also inviting. Hmm, seems kind of legit. But I've already been to Abu Dhabi, and I don't think I need to go. Plus, my subscribers come to my channel to learn geography, not watch me indulge in luxury travel. They'd probably hate it. Well, you can actually bring one other person if you'd like, and they might enjoy the experience too, so if anything, you could do this trip for them. Also, aren't you gonna make a video on the UAE eventually too? You could just come and take this opportunity to get some footage for that video. Hmm. And again, the best part is it's completely free to you. We're covering all costs. <laughs> Abu Dhabi is the capital of the United Arab Emirates, and at a population of about 1.5 million, it is the second most populous city in the country. The city is built on an archipelago of about 200 islands, some natural, some man-made, via land reclamation, many open to the public, while others are private. Either way, many of them are known for their distinct function and specialty. For example, Lulu Island is where all the camel racing happens, Bal Rumaid is the fishery island, Reem Island is the up-and-coming upscale residential and commercial district, Sadiat Island has the best golf resort, Sas Al Nakal Island is the industrial power plant and oil refinery, Yas Island is the fun island with all the theme parks and cool stuff, and of course the biggest and busiest Abu Dhabi located on its own island. The city is is a part of the larger Abu Dhabi Emirate, which alone takes up over 85% of the country's landmass, and the city also holds the third largest sovereign wealth fund in the world at about $1.3 trillion in assets, mostly in the hydrocarbon sector. This means Abu Dhabi is a big deal, and if anything happens, usually Abu Dhabi has to clean up the mess for the rest of the country. In a way, I guess you could say Abu Dhabi is kind of like the brain, that the, the manager of the Emirates. Like, everything starts and ends here. And it would also be the destination of our journey. First off, business class flight for mom, economy for me, but it was okay because I had the whole road to myself. Also, I got recognized by this flight attendant named Katarina. I made friends with a Syrian and German couple. And finally, bam, Abu Dhabi. Then for the first time in my life, this happened. So here we are. That's me. <laughs> All of our bottle. <laughs> so I have never had a personal chauffeur pick me up. That's our guy. From there, before we even registered, they wanted all the creators to do this desert experience. So this is kind of how it went. off for a second. And those dances that you saw, the belly dancing and the spinning Tanura dance, those are actually Egyptian, not Emirati, but you know, eh, tourism. Just give the people what they want. It's like when Chinese restaurants serve french fries. But anyhow, when you arrive in the city, you'll notice there are so many different types of buildings. You have the Leaning Tower of Pizza, the Honeycomb, the Skinny Pineapples, the Golf Ball, the Bottle Opener, Lego Wars, the Robot Fingers, Are We in Singapore? And the Sliced Bamboo. In any case, it was time to get to work. VidCon. This is the first VidCon that we've ever done in Abu Dhabi. So first, give yourselves a round of applause. You've made it to VidCon. Yeah!
first one. I have to say, I kind of enjoyed it. I met some other YouTubers around the world. I even met this guy who hosted the Serbian version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Best part though, I met up with an old friend from Bahrain. So I'm about to say hi to somebody. It's late. <laughs> I don't. Ah, uh, it's been so long. <laughs> Good to see you. Fine. Good to see you again. Hi. This is my mom. Lath has grown up so much since I last saw him like five years ago. He's married, he has a daughter. And when we parted ways, he gave me the best gift ever. Yeah. So uh, Lath got me one of the best things ever. What is this, Lath? This is... I know that you like it. Show waiter halwa. <laughs> oh, so happy. This is the best halwa in the entire Arab world. Oh my gosh. Oh, so good. We'll talk about that stuff in another time. This video is about Abu Dhabi. In the end, we were transferred to the Rosewood Hotel. This was mom and I's first time in a five-star hotel. This place was insane. I've never had a Wagyu burger. Wagyu, more like Wagyu. Now, Visit Abu Dhabi gave us a whole list of things we could do in Abu Dhabi. Of course, you know, I wanted to do some fun, wacky stuff, but I also wanted to kind of do some stuff that, you know, spoke a little bit about the culture and the Emirates, just to, you know, show some balance. So first, uh, the fun, wacky stuff. Now that that's out of the system, if you go to Abu Dhabi, you have to go to Qasr al Hosn. It is the oldest stone building in the entire city, a fortress, and it was the former home of the former sheikhs of the country. Every room you enter tells a story of Abu Dhabi's past and how it went from a small fishing community to the shiny skyscraper metropolis you see juxtaposed across the fortress walls. Also, I was freaking out because I discovered something. So Abu Dhabi, check it out. I think I discovered an optical illusion. I'm kind of freaking out. So check it. I'm standing on the northwest side of the building. It's the furthest part from this thing the golf ball building it's relatively big when you look at it from a distance but here's the thing when you walk closer to it on the northeast side of the building the building looks smaller it's weird it's like so far away now but i walked closer to it that's so weird. It's like an optical illusion. I'm not even joking. It's weird. It's the weirdest thing ever. You got to check it out. Right next to Qasr al Hosn, though, you find the House of Artisans, a unique structure that gives you a look into the traditional handicrafts of the Arabian Peninsula. Everything from clothes, fishing gear, weaponry, to even traditional coffee ceremony performances can be seen here. Also, you get to taste the coffee. From there, it was off to the Louvre. That's right, Abu Dhabi holds the only Louvre outside of France. Now, mom is the artist of the family. I mean, if you look at my walls, she painted all these things over here. And so this was something she wanted to do. Now, of course, the facility is not as big as the actual Louvre in Paris, but it has an impressive collection of artifacts and works transcending every period from ancient to contemporary. My favorite section was obviously the cartography room. And see if you can find the room with the massive map of the Emirates on the floor. Finally, it was time. We had had to go to the mother load of landmarks. This puts Abu Dhabi on the map. Yeah, that's right, Sheikh Zayed Mosque, the largest mosque of the country, able to hold 40,000 people. Took over 10 years to build with marble imported from North Macedonia, Italy, China, and India. The carpet inside is considered the largest in the world, made of wool from Iran and New Zealand. The chandeliers were made in Germany with millions of Swarovski crystals, and the central chandelier is the third largest in the world. It's a spectacle, to say the least. If you want a really good view of the mosque, though, in all its splendor, you have to go across the street from the mosque at Wahat al Karama. It's a memorial structure made of 31 monolithic leaning tablets built to commemorate those that died fighting for the country. If there's any way you can end a trip here, this would probably be it. So yeah, Abu Dhabi, I, I was not expecting to go there, but I guess I did and I got so much out of it. Thank you, Abu Dhabi Tourism Boards. Visit Abu Dhabi. Thank you, Rosewood Hotel. Thank you, all the activities that were able to give us a really cool experience. And uh, best part, I got some really good footage for the upcoming UAE episode. 
episode. So if anything, it was worth it for that. Hope you guys have a good one. Stay cool. Stay tuned.